this, and some of these things we're going to uh, approach on more level. Um, let me download the examples I had. I'm not going to spend um, a lot of time um, on applets. Uh, I'll have a word about the Java web start, and then we'll talk about JSP and Java servlets, which are cousins, siblings, two sides of, a, of, of, of the same coin. There's something. Pick your favorite analogy to indicate that they are closely related. Um, the um, applets, again, we had a brief discussion at this a while ago. Um, they fell out of favor. Um, nutshell, an applet is Java code that runs inside of a browser. So if you ever go to a page and you see like a big gray area and maybe the little Java cup of coffee or something like that. I have a feeling with Ajax a lot of these things became a lot less necessary because you could get application like behavior using just web standards as opposed to having to use um, Java and bringing in Java. Um, Let's see if I have an example of that just to show you what an applet looks like. Pretty sure I did. The issues. All right, so we go into an applet. And I open up my web page, and the page you're using views Java. More information on that is available, blah, blah, blah. Your browser doesn't support the applet tag. That's why we don't use applets anymore. All right. Let's see what Chrome has to say about this. Same thing. Those of you that came in late, I have good news and bad news. The bad news is I gave all the answers to the final before you got here. The good news is at least I brought donuts in today, so you're welcome, you're welcome to have a donut. All right. <laughs> this site uses a plugin, Java, that is unsupported. And again, I don't know what we could do about that if that's the setting or the browser just doesn't support it or not. Um, so we'll spend a second glancing at this and then we'll rapidly move on. One thing that you would need to do is you'd need to edit your application to not be a J-frame or anything like that, but to be an applet. And that has minimal requirements. The conversion is actually quite straightforward to convert it from um, uh, like a Java frame or a J-frame or whatever into an applet. But again, it's something you, you have to do. So, notice what we have here. Instead of extending J frame, we extend applet, J applet rather. All right. The rest of the code looks the same. Difference being, okay, just how it goes. Right? Yeah, so, and essentially, what you would put in your init method is what you would put in your main method. Now, there's a couple other methods that exist on an applet as well that you could override. Yeah, probably. Why am I even talking about this? Um, I, I mean, I, I cannot recall a specific one. I swear I've seen applets at, 
I swear I've seen. And usually there are applets to do like appy kind of things. Like for example, like an online photo editor could be a Java applet. Because you know that's like more extensive functionality than you get out of a basic web page. So that would be like uh, maybe an example. But yeah, you're probably right. I don't need to talk about it much more. Pardon me? Yeah, look what I did to him. Now I'm sad. No, no, you didn't. Believe me. Right. The other methods, by the way, if I'm allowed, if I'm allowed to finish this portion of the lecture, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there's a destroy, there's an init, there's a start, and there's a stop method that you can put code in. All right. But you're right. Probably never going to see it. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, the, the question is, you know, the question is, is there anything any programming language can do that another programming language can? And I would be hesitate to say, um, no, there isn't. And really why Ajax is most uh, relevant here is because Ajax also runs largely in your browser. So just like an applet runs in your browser. So it wouldn't require extensive communication. So it's less, it's less that Ajax has similar functionality than, uh, the, than an applet. Um, it's less that like the, the language is, can do the same things. It's more that the configuration is set up that it's heavily client side based and as such um, gets a lot of the advantages of, of an applet. So that's, that's that. All right, we talked about the jar last time. I didn't edit the video because I, I, to be frank, I looked at it and thought that's probably not the best use of my time. It'd be better off grading stuff than, not that I graded anything, but I mean, <laughs> I mean theoretically. <laughs> This is a theoretical question. Resting up so I could grade stuff tonight, all right, might be a better analogy. Java Web Start. We saw this, and the start off part of Java Web Start is to have a jar file. So you need the jar to do the Java Web Start. So whether you include that jar in an installer, like we talked about last time, that that could be incorporated into to some sort of uh, install package, um, or you use Java Web Start, you need your starting point is a jar. I have a JNLP file. And I'm going to go in and make sure we're showing file extensions. And it's a .jnlp file. And essentially, all this is, is it's an XML file This is another one of those goofy Mac files. It's an XML file that simply tells the Java Web Start where to find stuff. So, we're using the Java 1.0 plus specification, the code base. This is. Um, Again, where this would be running off of. Um, href is um, the actual URL of this file. Information, you can have information about the application, what it does, and so on. 
Finally, resources, you specify the Java version, the um, job relevant, and where the main class lives. Similar to what you put in the jars manifest. So when you do that, if you open the web page then, oops, I have a link to launch the app. later and there it opens it up and it'll open up my little conversion app notice it's not going to open it up in the window all right and it's unable to launch it all right oh you know why because This needs to be on a web server. Okay. We saw the example last time, though, that you click it, it runs outside of the web browser. So the JNLP file tells you, like, where it's going to run from. That's sort of like an extra boost of security, if you will. And um, I suppose it would be. Um, and then if we look at the HTML, all we have is... I think a hyperlink. Yeah, just a hyperlink to the um, JNLP file. <coughs> All right, and that simply fires up and starts it. And again, to reiterate, the reason that it wouldn't run is because it needs to be on a web server, and. I don't think there's web server software installed here. Let me look. Pardon me? Exactly. Um, I would do that, but then I'd be leaving myself open to questions. Oh, I mean, we do have a web server installed. So localhost. Do that. Save it. Then let's copy everything over here. index that. All right. Launch app. Server has to be configured to allow delivering JNLP files. All right. The box says that I hope you can decipher through all these configuration issues, um, that to do this, it doesn't take a lot. All right? You need a job. All right? You need a, yeah, you don't take a lot. I'm struggling to do it here, paradoxically. From a configuration point, viewpoint, there's things you have to do. It has to be on a web server. The web server has to be configured to allow serving that particular type of file. Once you do that, code is easy. You create that JNLP file that's all of you that are taking Android. It's almost like the Android manifest, all right, that says some information about the app that you're running, all right. And once you do that, then you make a link to that file. That gets downloaded, and boom, your Java Web Start application starts running, all right. Let's see. What did we what did we do? It was a radio button example, right? What did yeah. That was let's say what was the example that we had uh, a J uh, a Java web start? That was a radio button example. Let's see if I can bring that code up. Given we know that that already works.
Okay, this is the example. I oh no, this is this is their link. I'm getting confused here. All right, here we go. We click that. It downloads a file for us. And then it starts up Java, and we're good to go. And here we go. We can click around it. Notice it's outside of the browser window. It's a separate window. Now, if we look at the source of this, All right, here you notice the URL, simply a link. A href equals blah, 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 dot JNLP. All right. So, that JNLP file we actually downloaded to the browser, or to our uh, desktop. So, I can open this guy up with WordPad, and we can see the XML here. Here it says the code base. In other words, where is this going to be called from? All right. Um, what's the name of it? Radio button demo.jnlp. Information about it. What's the name of it? Who the vendor is? Um, the home page of the vendor. Um, a description of it. And so on. And then finally, it has the resource of the jar that we're using and what the main class is for that matter configuration for that. All right. Now there are security issues if it is an unsigned um, Java application. Uh, unsigned means that you do not specify the source and you do have not assured um, the source of it. Um, then you can't access um, um, system resources like save stuff to the disk or something like that. But you could create a signed app uh, application and then it could access um, the system resources like save stuff and make it work like a real application. All right, Java servlets and JSP files. Let's bring up an example of each.
This is something that should be sort of familiar to you if you've done any PHP. All right. Um, ASP.NET is, um, you could write it this way, but we typically do better and don't write it this way. This probably has a, this is probably a closer analogy either to old school ASP or to uh, PHP. And that is, notice that, JSP is Java inside of HTML. It's a Java server page. So a Java server, a Java server page delivers to the browser an HTML page. And it does so by including Java code inside an HTML document, inside what looks like an HTML document. This would be stored with an extension of .jsp, not .html well. So notice the red, the stuff that's designated by these special directives, that is Java code. All right. So this is a JSP file that 5% of the time tells you you're having a lucky day, right? Because it generates a random number between 0 and 1, and if your random number is before or is higher than 0.95, it tells you that you're having a lucky day. Otherwise, it says, eh, too bad. And then it has a link back to itself, so you can reload the page and try again if you're not convinced with its answer. This runs on the server. All right. In other words, you do not send this to the browser. JSP, as the name implies, Java server pages. All right. Um, the code runs on the server. So what you have is something like this. You have a client who's someone running a browser. that requires a web page through the internet. If my server is using JSP pages, then the server loads the JSP pages, or page or pages, then it executes the relevant Java code. And it delivers back to the browser HTML. Actually, I'm saying HTML. When I say HTML, here in your head that it delivers a mix of HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. It delivers a regular web page. So the idea is through coding, through Java coding, we can construct a page dynamically. In other words, if we were to make a plain old HTML page, it could say you're having a lucky day or you're having an unlucky day. But it couldn't randomly pick between the two because there's nothing in HTML like if statements that allow us to say sometimes display this, sometimes display that. That requires some kind of scripting. And the idea of server-side scripting is that the browser, oh, I'm sorry, that the server does its thing, takes all the parameters, does all the execution of Java instructions, and then outputs HTML. Now, some of this HTML that you see here is just plain old HTML and doesn't require the server to do anything. So the stuff that's not included within the red bracket percent sign thing, all right, is code that the server executes in order to produce its output. The client will never see that. The client will see the output from that. So JSP involves creating pages HTML, essentially HTML pages that contain Java. And the Java adds the programming part to it. So again, this is a pretty trivial example. But 
let's say if Canvas was done via JSP page, all right, if you logged on versus me logging on, first thing that would happen is there would be code, there'd be Java code that would query the database, look to see that you've entered in your password and user ID correctly. Assuming it did, it would take you to the home page. And if I did, it would take me to my home page as well. Now, our home pages are going to look different, right? They're going to look different for a couple of reasons. First of all, you're taking different classes and I'm teaching, right? Some of you might be taking a couple of my classes, but your schedule has three or four classes or maybe only one class. Whereas my Canvas home page is going to show the five classes that I'm teaching, all right? It's going to show that. The other difference is, is I can do different stuff because I'm the instructor. All right? I can do things that a student can't do. I can create assignments, I can grade assignments, and so on. I can make announcements, and so on. So everyone's home page in Canvas is going to look different. Does that mean that everyone has a separate HTML file? No. That would be crazy. That would be, that'd be thousands of HTML files, right? There's, what, 15,000 students at LC? There's probably maybe, maybe every semester there's 12, 13,000 students enrolled, plus maybe the students that are off a semester or whatever. That's impractical, and it obviously couldn't work that way. But what is there? There's one page. There's one JSP page that has the smarts built into it, to not just deliver the same HTML each time, but to run out to the database, grab the relevant information, and dynamically create the HTML that each person needs for their particular home page. All right? The key thing about JSP, though, is that there's Java code inside of what essentially is an HTML document. Now, let's look at a Java servlet. It would be nice if they had a Java servlet showing the same example. And they do. Hey, my lucky day. Maybe. Why would you not show the same example as a servlet? Why? Who is this? NTU. I know, if I'm so smart, how come I'm not using my pages? All right. Let's look at a servlet example. Servlet example is a Java class. All right? So it's not an HTML document. It's a .java file. But notice what is in. We have our out.println, which we've seen before, right? except it's outputting HTML. So essentially, we have HTML inside of Java. That's probably the easiest way to remember the difference uh, to it. In one case, you have HTML, and inside of the HTML code, you have little chunks of Java code embedded. Servlet files, you have Java classes, and inside of those Java classes, you have bits of HTML embedded that the Java class outputs out. Now the difference here is when we did out.println, we were displaying the message to our monitor, right, to our terminal. In the context of a server, when we do out.println, that means send this to the client, send this to the person's browser who, requ who requested it. All right. And we can talk about advantages and disadvantages of both. One nice thing about JSP pages is you could have, like a graphic designer, for example, mock up a web page in HTML as a prototype that says, this is what the Canvas web page is going to look like, home page is going to look like. And they could just hard code in three or four classes just to get the appearance right. And then when you're ready to actually execute it, you'd go in and you'd put the Java code in to actually interrogate the database and display the results and so on. All right? That'd be a little harder to do in a case like this because you needed a Java programmer to create a servlet that would output that. 
But again, you can mock up something in HTML very quickly just to get a sense of a prototype of what it's going to look like. And then you take out the hard-coded stuff and put in the HTML, or I'm sorry, the actual Java code. The problem with JSP pages is it gets ugly. All right, it's ugly code. Look at this. We have an if statement that starts up here in this Java block. The else statement is in that Java block. And the ending if statement is in that Java block. Well, this isn't so bad because there's only like one line of HTML here and one line of HTML here. But could you imagine if there was a bunch of lines instead of just a single line A? That would be a mess to read. And something that's difficult to read is difficult to what? To change. All right. So that's sort of the downside of the JSP is it's kind of a old school, unorganized way of doing things. Now, on a technical level, both of these compile the same way. Both of these compile to Java servlets. All right. So from the server's perspective, there really isn't a huge difference. Uh, it's more of a development perspective. Question? As nothing, well, that's a good question. That's a good question. Does JSP like applet? Is it relevant? Well, well the, the question is, is, does it matter about making, about using applets, whether you were using JSP or not, I think is what you're asking. Does using JSP make it easier for us to use applets? Oh, no. Oh, oh okay, no, 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 no. You're asking about is, uh, is JSP served out? No. And I'll tell you why. Because JSP, what's the S in JSP stand for? Server. All right. So in other words, there's not the configuration issues on the client and the concerns on the client side. This code runs on the server. You just have to get that server configured right, and everyone gets their plain old HTML pages. It's just like if you were running an ASP page, an ASPX page, would you need um, the ASP.NET framework installed to access a page on a browser? No. Why not? Well, because you're not getting an ASPX page. You're getting an HTML page. The ASPX processing is happening on the client, uh, I'm sorry, on the server side. And by the time it gets to you, the client, it's just plain old HTML. It's just that instead of happen to have being created via um, hard-coded HTML, is created via ASP or, or JSP or, or something like that. All right. So this is ways that you can use Java on the web. All right. Um, there are frameworks. There's like the NetBeans framework and, and all that, that that facilitate that, similar to what you would do in um, similar to, it's a framework like ASPX is a framework, although it doesn't really do the same sort of things. All right. Um, but it's a framework in the sense that in both cases it gives you something to build on to. You don't have to do everything from scratch. All right. Any questions on anything like this? Obviously for these things, Finals wise, you don't really need to know how to do this. I would not ask you to write a servlet or I would not ask you to write a um, JSP page. But the things that you should know, JSP and servlets are both server side technologies. So the server has to get it right, not every individual client. Whereas Java Web Start and applets are the, the, the Java execution takes place on the client machine. All right, any other questions? I posted an announcement. The, the final will be due essentially Monday through Friday of next week. All right. Um, Friday is sort of like the, the final drop dead due date, if you will. You know, you should aim to get things done before that, but 
that's like the absolute cutoff deadline. All right. Other questions? No. No. People ask me that. I don't know. Do other classes do that? Like have class the Monday of finals week if the... Okay. Yeah, finals week is finals week for me. Yeah. Now, that being said, certainly if you have questions, um, I don't maintain my normal office hours during finals week, but if you have questions, let me know and I can arrange to be around or I can answer them via email or uh, we can arrange a Skype session. So, um, uh, again, you know, don't, don't, you know, you don't think that when I leave today, I'm, I'm gone, all right? You still have access to me, right, right. As much as you might want that to be the case, right? Uh, I, uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, we're simply not having formal class. So you can email me. We can uh, make uh, arrange for you to come in um, next week sometime if you have questions. Um, we can arrange a Skype, anything along those lines. Other questions? All right. Um, time for the evaluation. I need a volunteer from the studio audience. Okay. What you will need to do is you'll need to take this up to BU211, all right, and just give it to... I was going to say give it to someone that's there, but give it to one of the administrative assistants that works there and either ask them if you are an administrative assistant or it's probably a safe bet that if they're sitting behind the desk. Although I guess if a student just like plopped down behind the desk, that could cause me all kinds of trouble, but you know, I'm assuming, you know, um, you get the idea anyhow. Um, 